All right, we're starting right there. Okay. Okay, welcome back. So we made some chicken fried steak, and the guys were asking me, well, chicken fried, doesn't that mean there's supposed to be chicken? Now, you tell me. Yeah. For anybody who hasn't seen the show in the past couple of days, where you been? Brian Graham's here now, my vintner extraordinaire, my winemaker in from California, and Tina, who besides... Um, introducing me is now involved in helping bringing the wines that Brian makes to market here at least on the north north coast or the northeast mm -hmm. and the whole east coast so we're talking about I didn't know you're from Texas originally yeah country Boy fried raised. steak yeah. right yeah. so tell me again am I right country fried steak is the the batter that you put on fried chicken you apply to other things correct I mean there's country fried steak and there's country uh, country fried chicken it's just wait. It's crazy. It's just crazy. The last word is what it is. It's right. A, it's it's a flank steak you bat, beat right. up, or it's a chicken breast that you beat up, and then you batter it. And country gravy being a simple pan sauce you make after that with a little flour, a little classic roux, and you flavor it with brown gravy like I do. I like the brown gravy. It's a textural white. issue, yeah. and you can use the white gravy or the brown gravy. Well, we did this one now with a little bit of brown stock in right. there, and we did it with some sage. Okay. So it's got the butter and the flour, and it's got the pan drippings, and then we did some sage. So a little bit of a nuance there. Okay. And I have to tell you, Tina brought this. I know what this wine is. Yeah. Okay. Tina brought this wine a couple weeks back, and this is why I said I have to meet Brian. The bottle that we had was a sample bottle. There was no label on it. She said, I'll just give you an indication. This is what Brian makes. I think you're going to like it. And Armand and I tasted this, and what was our reaction? He loved it. Blown loved away. It. They blown, me away. And they were blown away. I said, I got to meet Brian. When's he going to be in town? So, Brian, we're going we're gonna to tell a little bit. Before I tell anybody and mess it up, tell everybody at home about this wine. Uh, Canard Vineyard is the corner of Dunaway Lane and Silver Trail, if you know anything about Napa. It's up in the northern end in Calistoga. And it's a really cool old vineyard who's been supplying their grapes to some very famous wineries in Napa for a long time. And in 2006, the owner and I got together and decided to start peeling some of the grapes away to uh, make our own. And uh, he's always named his vineyard Kennard, um, for a nickname for Duck. That's been his name his whole life. And uh, it's just a great, cool project, less than a thousand cases, tiny production. Uh, now, and this is the reserve. What we talked about a, a couple of days ago, because you've been with us, you've been kind enough to be here all week. We talked about how you find these vineyards and you go in and partner with the owners of these properties right. to make the best possible wine out of what they have to work with. Absolutely. So this is a primary example. This is one of those times where you went in and you, you said, all right, this is what you're doing. And I think, asking my advice, that we should do this because it can be a better end result. Right. Now, you've got more than one cab that comes from this vineyard. This is the reserve. The reserve is a little bit of, more of a Bordeaux style blend. Okay. It has a little Cabernet Franc a little Petit Verdot in it. And let me explain that, because a lot of times, you know, you go into a liquor store and you see uh, Vintners Reserve, Private Re v Founders Reserve, you see all these labels, which usually, quite honestly, mean nothing. It just, Correct. it's a marketing tool. In this case, though, you've taken a portion of the grapes mm -hmm. and or the juice. Correct. And you've treated it differently than you have with the rest of the lot. Correct. And that lends itself. How's this different now? Because I like them both. I mean, I tried both wines. Right. I thought they were both exceptional. Before we even talked about price, I thought they were exceptional. What's different between the cab and the reserve in, in the way you make them? Age, how long it's in the barrel. Uh, you know, the regular, the estate is 100% Cabernet. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more tannic, a little bit more full bodied, uh, and a little bit less time in the barrel. And the reserve is a little bit prettier. A little bit softer, a little More bit finesse, rounder, and then we right. age a little bit longer in the barrel. The main difference is qu quantity. Uh, the, the estate is almost everything. Right. So it's about 970, 900,000 cases every year. Okay. This is about 250 cases. Wow, and we're still talking nothing like the big boys that are you know, a couple hundred thousand cases. Right. Well, let's see. So what are we going to expect on this now? Uh, the Cabernet Franc is lint on the nose. That classic rose petal, that classic ripe red fruit, that's, that's amazing. That's from the Cabernet Franc. And then it's going to lead right into a classic cab. And the finish, cheers by the way. Cheers. And the finish will have a little bit of tannin structure, and that's from the Petit Verdot. I'll say the same thing I said the first time I tasted it. I would sit down and drink a bottle of this with some good friends mm -hmm. like this. I would pair this with uh, any number of chicken dishes. Chicken fried steak? I tell you, this, this would almost be a waste with chicken fried steak. <laughs> I don't know? know about that. Unless the chicken fried steak is it's really made, killer. Maybe you, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling you, this <laughs> is the finesse right. that's in this glass. Uh, cab, to me, is, is take it or leave a type of wine. Right. I like some cab. And I'm the type of guy, you know, I'm not a snob about wines, but there's some cabs that just are stringent. They're just very tough and strong. Called grippy. Yes. 
And then there's others that are a lot more well-made, and then there's this. And, and I guess what the finesse and the softness is from blending those other grapes into it. Well, the idea is, and it's similar to cooking, and I sort of do this all the time, and this is the first time I've actually done it in front of a chef. But if you were to make pasta without salt, it's sort of, you're, you're strapping your hands right. behind your back and limiting yourself. But it, the Bordeaux-esque style, and this is 96% Cabernet, so it is a cab. Right. But the idea is, is that you take year in and year out multitude of things. And the year when the cab isn't quite as good, you add a little more Merlot, right. a little more Petit Verdot. The years when the Merlot is not as good, it's a little more Cabernet. And year in and year out, you make a better, more consistent quality wine. So for somebody who likes my style, soft, plush, rich wines, the flavor profiles may be a little different every year. It's sort of like your tomatoes taste a little bit great. different every year. That's great. To me, that's an excellent way of approaching wines. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So again, for anybody that might have missed earlier in the week, right. you've taken a European sensibility to wine. Old world. Partnered that in a lot of ways with the California style and come up with your own unique style yeah. of winemaking. I like soft, plush wines. I think we all do. But we really like, I like the fresh California flair, that right. really fresh fruit. So my goal is to sort of leave the wines alone as much as possible, keep that soft flavor, and then have that ripe red, that ripe red fruit. Tina, you came and brought this to us. We tasted it. We loved it. What's the reaction you're getting to people that you taste this wine? They love it. They want to know where they can get it. Where can they, they get it. this? Where can they get this wine? This is another one that's going to be a little hard to come by. Mm -hmm. This one's going to be hard to come by. They can buy it locally at two different liquor stores. Okay. Where, where's your website? Uh, it's canardvineyard.com canard vineyard c a n a r d vineyard.com it's singular it's one okay. vineyard okay uh, I mean, well, it's just really cool i tell you what after this i know you you're, you're going to spend a couple more days with us i don't know i i think that we could just do this for the next couple of days well, this I think is we really really awesome yeah. i tell you what folks thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it cheers brian tina thank you yeah. very much thank you so much brian's going to be here again tomorrow we got more great food more great wine if you want to find out more check out carmines tv.com we'll have a link to to canard and uh, actually you know what tina I don't know if we're going to top this, but I'm willing to try. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Salute. Salute. Thanks. And we're supposed to talk about the Dallas Cowboys now, I think. Right? The Cowboys? What? The Cowboys. What do you mean the Dallas Cowboys? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did no. you see the pictures on the wall when you yeah, walked yeah. in? New York Giants? Yeah, yeah, Those know, guys that actually walked in the building? I know. Yeah. yeah. They eat here. You're going to talk about the Dallas nah, Cowboys? Yeah. It was a joke, because the guy behind the camera <laughs> said, absolutely, don't do that. <laughs> When somebody says, when somebody says, don't absolutely do something, what's the first thing you're gonna do? Mick wants to know, are they in the are they in the NFL still? Mick wants to know, are they the, are they uh, well, are they the Canadian seeing how, uh, well, seeing how the, the team that you love so much, their head coach is on the Wall of Fame in Cowboy Stadium. You would think that you might be okay with it, but you never know. I heard a little twang coming out there. I heard a little Dallas twang coming out there. That's the only shirt Brian has. We've seen him all week. He's sleeping in the car to be here every day. Well, they're, they're strapping me down, and you know. We said he's we said he's a winemaker. We didn't say he's a rich winemaker. He's oh, yeah. sleeping in the